Hola, welcome to a new video. Slightly different this one. It's gonna be more of a guide, like a QA type thing. Uh, quick life update before I jump into it. We have exactly two weeks left of the time of filming this at the solar farm. And then we're going to Darwin for three days. And then we go to Bali. So two weeks left. We've had some rain, so it's gonna be a bit boggy this week. Uh, but yeah, we'll get through it and I'm looking forward to it. Now to the main bit of this video. Enjoy. Today's topic is solar farms. The ultimate guide to solar farms. This is a video for anybody who's wanting to understand what you do at a solar farm, how much you get paid at a solar farm. I'm gonna break it up into what you need to get a job, how you get a job, and then what you actually do on the job and then the best bit, how much you get paid. <laughs> Each solar farm is different, I will say that. I, this is my first ever solar farm, and everybody I've spoke to um, has said it's slightly different wherever you go. But it's also very similar. So, let's do it, let's do it. What do you need to actually get on the solar farm? For one, you need the correct visa. You've got to be on a working holiday visa or already a permanent resident, I guess. Um, yeah. I'm on a working holiday visa and this counts towards my 88 days farm work or 88 days regional work um, in order for me to get my second year. So I, I need to complete 88 days in order to me for me to get two years. So to get on this, you have to have a what's called a white card. Now this is nationwide. White card is basically to say you are competent to work on a construction site. Make, made a little list of where's best to apply. Usually, it's if you've got a contact, if you've got an email address for a recruitment company, or somebody who's already working at the farm, they can get you in. Um, that is a, a big way how many people actually get on the solar farm. Uh, but we was lucky enough to know somebody who had an email, and that's how we got here. Um, so the best ways are Seek, Indeed, Facebook groups, uh, yeah, the usual, the usual. They are on there and there's some good paying jobs. Make sure to write out your CV. Now, you don't actually have to have previous construction experience. I myself did have, but Sophie didn't. She basically gave some real world examples of where she's you know, worked hard in the past, but where she's done manual jobs. As long as you put something on there where you're showing you're willing and able, yeah, they'll, they'll take you on. So, Accommodation. Accommodation is one of the things we didn't actually think of um, before we got here. We thought straight away we'd have to find an apartment somewhere or a house where we can rent a room. We were very lucky enough to get in the camp where all our expenses are included. Food, accommodation, everything. So we are very spoiled here, let's put it that way. Because especially with the few weeks we had off before, we didn't spend a penny. The, our only outgoings were alcohol. <laughs> on the weekends yeah so it's major major plus but it's not everywhere so we know a few people in various different farms they haven't had the luxury of this um, so it is dependent on each farm so that is to be aware of so what happens on your first day uh, you get your boarding instructions you're basically told be here for this time do this wear this you will be provided certain PPE so we had to provide our own trousers but the rest basically they provided so we had all of our tops provided our work boots provided all PPE all provided the first day you get picked up um, if the transport is included you'll get picked up they will take you directly to where you need to be you'll have your little pre-start in the morning and then you get taken for the induction One of the big things that we didn't know what to expect when coming here was what were the individual jobs that we were going to do. We had no idea. So I wanted to bring out a bit of a list of what we actually do uh, or have been doing just so people can get a, an idea of what it is you actually do on a solar farm because for some people, especially who haven't been in construction, it might be a bit daunting but basically each task is repetitive. It's fairly boring after a few weeks of doing it. Um, and it's just manual work. You know, you are doing a lot of walking, you're lifting things, not heavy because they have machinery for that, but that's part of the farm. You know, you, this, our farm has over a million panels when it's gonna be finished. So you can imagine 
fitting a million panels by hand. A few jobs that you'll see on any solar farm is tubes. That's what I did first when I got to Western Downs, tubing. Putting tubes onto the rails ready for when the panels get on. Another one, panels. So you are lifting the solar panels up into place and you're fastening them on. All these are very repetitive, as I've said. Other jobs involve a bit of equipment, so it's called swaging and bombing. Basically nuts and bolts, you're fastening together brackets, tubes. It's, it's not difficult, but it's tiring. That's one thing about it, especially with the panelling. I'm not actually panelling at the moment, but there's a lot of people and the panelling is very, very, very tiring. However, there is a caveat to that. The caveat is there is an incentive and now your incentive this happens at most solar farms is if you do a certain amount of panels if you hit your target for the day you get to go home early and you get to leave with full day's pay which obviously as you can imagine is quite an incentive there's many many people who really try and uh, hit that target and to be honest before we had a bit of rain recently everybody was starting to hit their target so that was great to see and what hours do you expect to work? Now, this will change wherever you are, and it changes from summer to winter because of the longer days and the shorter days. You can work up to 12 hours, and you can. we're working currently 10 hours. So we're going in at half six, and we're finishing at five. Um, obviously, we've got two half an hour breaks within that day, uh, but they are long days, and we are doing six days a week. So 60 hour weeks, one day off on a Sunday, it is tiring. However, you have to remember the, it's weather dependent, it's, it's materials dependent. For the first couple of months, there weren't actually any panels here. So we were all doing mechanical builds. We were doing things that didn't involve panels. One question I get asked is, is it suitable for everybody? And absolutely, there is a job there that anybody can do. Absolutely anybody. You don't have to be strong, you know, you don't have to be quick. There's always something for everybody to do. So don't let the fact that it's a solar farm and you're building things put you off because it's really not quite as you expect. Okay, a bit of a change of the scenery. I'm in the back field of Stayover. There's a road right next to me, so I do apologise in advance if it's a bit too loud sometimes. Where were we? Money. Let's talk about money. Every farm is different. That's something that you have to remember. Because we get everything included, our hourly rate is slightly less than other farms that don't include the accommodation. But in my opinion, I think it still works out a lot better here because you just don't waste any time having to cook, having to think about going to the shops. You know, when you get home, you can go to the gym and then you can go to dinner and then you're done. It's excellent. So our hourly rate here is $29 and about 70 cents. That's plus your overtime. So your one and a half overtimes and the two times overtime when you get to the weekends. Um, and we are currently doing 60 hours a week half six until 5 p.m. with two half an hour breaks. I think we get paid for one break um, and then we don't for the other. Uh, it works out really well. I'm, I'm happy with the hours because you know we're here to earn money and clock the days off and that's exactly what we can do. Um, other farms it does vary what you work but usually you know usually it works six days and one day off. One other topic I wanted to speak about was social side of things. Now, a lot of my questions before I came to the solar farm was, are they social? You know, we're coming to do our farm work, we want to meet people, we want to be involved with groups, we want to have a good experience. Certainly this farm has been excellent for backpackers. There's been a huge group of us, many from South America uh, and a few from Europe, but it's been a great, great time with them. We've always had something to do. We always get something planned. You know, it's, it's been a, a, a proper group type thing. Now I'm sure you're absolutely fed up of my rambling on. That just about sums it for this video. Yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate you spending the time. I hope I've answered any questions that you had or you've been thinking about solar farms. The next vlog will be about going to Darwin, our little experience there. We've got three or four days there and then we fly to Bali. So very excited for that. Thanks for watching.